Welcome to Climate One, a conversation about America's energy, economy, and environment. I'm Greg Dalton. Today we're discussing the future of the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir that serves two and a half million people in the Bay Area. Proposition F on the upcoming San Francisco ballot asks voters to fund a study of different ways to capture water from the Tuolumne River and send it to San Francisco and Silicon Valley. That could lead to a second vote in about four years seeking authorization to poke a hole in the O'Shaughnessy Dam and fundamentally change the regional water system. Supporters say draining the dam would atone for San Francisco's original sin and restore an idyllic valley in Yosemite National Park. Opponents say the cost would be exorbitant and the risk put to the region's water security just as the Sierra snowpack is declining due to a disrupted climate. Over the next hour, we'll address the future of Hetch Hetchy with our audience at the Commonwealth Club in a program that's underwritten by the San Francisco Foundation. We're joined by two people on each side of this passionate debate. Susan Leal is a water consultant and former general manager of the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. She's also a co-author of the book, Running Out of Water. Mike Marshall is executive director of Restore Hetch Hetchy, and Spreck Rosecrans is director of policy at Restore Hetch Hetchy, the main organization behind Proposition F. Jim Wonderman is CEO of the Bay Area Council, a business group, and former chief of staff for Mayor Frank Jordan, and also served under Mayor Dianne Feinstein. Please welcome them to Climate One. <clears throat> So, Mike Marshall, tell us why Proposition F is a good idea. Um, well, Greg, first of all, thanks for inviting us. This is a really important debate for San Francisco, for the region, and I would argue both for the state and for the nation. Um, uh, 99 years ago, San Francisco was given a special right, and that was the right to store part of our water supply in a national park. No other city in the country has that right, um, and no other city has the, the adverse <clears throat> excuse me, impact that um, our water system has on Yosemite National Park, the Stanislaus National Forest, and more importantly, the wild and scenic Tuolumne River. It's important to remember that our water comes from the Tuolumne River and is stored in nine reservoirs, one of which is called Hetch Hetchy. So many of us think our water comes from Hetch Hetchy, but in fact, it comes from the Tuolumne River. So we believe that um, given the special right that San Francisco was given 99 years ago, that we have a special responsibility, at least once every 99 years, to revisit that decision and see if we can't do better. And multiple studies over the years, and I know Jim will bring them up, he's got them under his arm here, <clears throat> have demonstrated that, in fact, San Francisco can still um, get its water from the Tuolumne River and still generate power along that river, but store its water supply elsewhere without harm being done to it. Um, and uh, we think that's worth um, uh, exploring further. The problem is San Francisco has not been a part of those conversations. They, for all intents and purposes, boycotted those studies. So we put Proposition F on the ballot in an effort to um, ultimately accomplish the goal of restoring Hetch Hetchy, and I'll be very clear about that, we're with Restore Hetch Hetchy, but you can't consolidate from nine reservoirs into eight without first making reforms to the system. And we think there are important reforms that need to be made because San Francisco, rightly or wrongly, we don't recycle a drop of water, and we pretty much treat our rainwater as sewage, whereas most other cities and counties in California have made significant investments over the last 25 to 30 years um, to um, capture the rainfall more successfully, more importantly, recharge their aquifer, um, and, and um, look at recycling water. And so we have linked um, reforming the water system and, and guaranteeing our, our future water security by building up our local water resources with then some environmental benefits, which would be the restoration of Hetch Hetchy Valley, improving flows on the wild and scenic Tuolumne River, where the salmon population has all but disappeared, and reducing polluted stormwater runoff into the bay. It's just a plan. Prop F doesn't get me a restored Hetch Hetchy Valley and it doesn't get us more recycled water. It's just a plan. The plan would have to be brought back to the voters in 2016. So we think this is an incremental first step, a small one in fact, um, but admittedly an important one and an important conversation for a city like San Francisco that, that, that rests or, or stands on its green values, on its environmental values, and yet we have a water system that's last in the state in so many ways. Jim Wonderman, why do you think Proposition F is a bad idea? Well, uh, thanks for uh, having me uh, here, Greg, and thank, uh, you know, thank the audience for being here tonight. And I want to pay uh, respect to Mike and to Spreck, who have known for a long time uh, for your, your uh, genuine passion that you've expressed on this issue. And uh, um, I, I don't mean to demean that in any way in any of the discussion that we have. But I have to say, uh, you know, we've looked at this for a long time, and we've looked at what you've put forward. And I have to say what you've, you've suggested in Prop F 
is really a very dangerous thing for San Francisco and a large part of the Bay Region. I think it's a misguided effort. And what troubles me a lot about it is it's, an ex it's been an extremely misleading attempt on the voters of San and the people of San Francisco. Uh, I attended your uh, opening of your event when you unfurled this banner that talks about water recycling. And you talk a lot about that and you talk about water conservation when in fact, the, you know, we're all for those kinds of things. And the Bay Area Council, which is a business association, which has worked on those kinds of water issues for a long time, we could certainly stand with you on water, wa water recycling, which is something the PUC has been doing, maybe not as much as, as soon as we like, but certainly doing. Uh, and water conservation. But this is not about that. This is about restoring Hetch Hetchy. It's about draining Hetch Hetchy Reservoir, which actually supplies somewhere between 85 to almost 100 percent of the water that we would, would come out of our tap if we were to turn it on now. And the same would have been true 20 years ago, and 40 years ago, and 60 years ago, and hopefully in the, in the future as well. And it, it's you know, it's a dangerous thing because, and the reason the Bay Area Council gets involved in something like this involuntarily is because you know, water security, reliability, pristine quality, these are things that make a region whole. Um, you know, we know we have a lot of problems in our infrastructure, we have problems in our education system, uh, we have all kinds of public problems today. Why create another one? We created the system 100 years ago, we'd stipulate we probably wouldn't build this today. But we built it at the time. There's a lot of things we wouldn't do today that we did 100 years ago or 50 years ago. And there are things that we take for granted. But you know, it's tough to build big projects today. This was something that, was, you know, that happened a long time ago that uh, you, you have to say it, it supplies all the water that we drink, or a very, very large part. And we can argue about how much, but we think it's a very large lion's share of that water. It produces 1.6 uh, million kilowatts of energy that support entirely the Muni overhead line system, the cable car system, San Francisco General Hospital, San Francisco Airport. We would lose all or a large portion of that power if we were to give up on the system. We would be with the rest of Northern California and California looking for alternate places to find our water if we took this storage out of service. We have rights to the Tuolumne, but where are you going to store the water? Let's be realistic about it. We're in the Delta. We're in other places to try to find our water in the future. Um, do we really want to invest billions of dollars into this? I understand, you know, it's a wonderful intent, but it's not something that's rational given this environment. Now, maybe you don't trust me because I'm, you know, I run the Bay Area Council and you don't know me. You know, why is it that our senator and former mayor, Dianne Feinstein, feels so passionately about this? Minority Leader Pelosi and Jackie Speer and the two leading environmental members of the state, uh, the state house, uh, Senator Mark <coughs> Reno and, and Supervisor Amiano. What about, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, assembly member Tom Amiano and former president of the board? Eleven members of the board of supervisors who d disagree about most things unanimously agree no on F. What about Mayor Ed Lee and every former living mayor, Mayor uh, and now Lieutenant Governor Newsom, um, Mayor Willie Brown, Mayor Frank Jordan, Mayor Art Agnos all say no on F. San Francisco tomorrow says no on F. There isn't a single major environmental group, major environmental group that's endorsed your measure. That has to raise some questions about its validity. So again, I agree with your passion. I think you know, it's well intended on your part. Uh, I honor your you know, part of the, demo, you know, the system of governance that we have where we have initiatives and you could put this thing forward with less than 10,000 signatures and have us consider it. But I urge the public to read this very, very carefully before you place a yes on F vote because we start going down this path, it's going to be very tough to turn back. Let's talk about the cost. I want to read a, a quote from the San Francisco Examiner editorial of October 11th. While we could get behind the restoration of Hetch Hetchy Valley and replacement of the city's water and power, if the replacement costs appeared within reach, it is hard at this moment to imagine anyone ever managing to come up with the necessary funding. So, Spreck Rosecrans, where's the money going to come from to do this? Well, first let me say that the cost is far less than what our opponents have claimed, or should be far less if competent people can manage the water system. So the state of California, if, if, if we look said between two to ten billion dollars. Yeah, the state of California, they actually said three to ten billion dollars. And if you parse that report and see how they got to those numbers, especially at the higher end, they had water costing sixteen thousand dollars an acre foot. Now, I know I'm not supposed to get into jargon, but that's 
16 times as much as you pay retail at your tap and 160 times as much as people pay on the open market. Furthermore, when we've looked at restoration projects that have successfully taken place in the state on the Trinity River, in the Bay Delta, with Mono Lake, on the San Joaquin River, we've seen communities that have been able to adapt. They've stored water, water in groundwater banks, they've recycled water, they've done all kinds of things to ensure that water supply reliability that is fundamental for our farms and cities. They've been able to do that to the tune of much greater volumes than what we're talking about here. But here... At what cost though? Where is it, the money going to come from? It, here, it's a question of don't even think about it. San Francisco will not, is not on the stage with us today. They sent these folks uh, who we've debated before. But San Francisco wants us not to talk about it. As far as where the money comes from, uh, it, it's important to get a plan, to get an estimate. Uh, and the, the usual sources, uh, Mono Lake was largely restored, or in part restored by the federal and state government, as well as the city of Los Angeles. Uh, we haven't ruled out philanthropy, so the, the usual sources. But the first thing to do is to get the people who run the system uh, through a vote of the people in the same room with the people that want to restore the valley and come up with a plan that's, that's cost effective. And Greg, the, the yeah. Mike, let's, get, let's get Susan, Susan had a chance yet. Susan used to run this system. Uh, let's get your opi opinion on the cost and where the money could come from, up to $10 billion. Thank you. We, we have been in the room before, Spreck. In fact, seven years ago, we debated this issue when I was general manager of the SFPUC. Um, and, and I do respect your opinion, and, and we've stayed friends over the year. At least I hope I think we're friends. But let's talk about where we're going to get the water. Because there's been discussion about, oh, we can go to this reservoir, that reservoir. There's really only six reservoirs that provide drinking water to the city and county of San Francisco. And as Jim mentioned, we get anywhere from 85 to 100 percent of our water from Hetch Hetchy Valley. Right now, right now, because there were reduced snowpack last year. Come on. Right now, don't interrupt, please. Right now. Don't lie. Right now, there are, there's close to 100 percent coming out of, uh, in San Francisco, coming out of your tap, close to 100% of that water is coming from storage in the Hetch Hetchy Valley, impounded behind the O'Shaughnessy Dam. Now people talk about, well, maybe you could get water, uh, store water somewhere else. The one area that they've been talking about for years is Don Pedro Reservoir, which is down, down the hill from the O'Shaughnessy Dam, from Hetch Hetchy Valley. Don Pedro Reservoir is owned and operated by Modesto Irrigation District. They said seven years ago in this room, it's not our, it's not our reservoir, reservoir. They continue to say they own the reservoir, they operate the reservoir, there is not room to store our water. In fact, Recently, the SFPUC has been negotiating for a minuscule amount of water to buy from that reservoir. Those negotiations broke off two weeks ago. Modesto said, we have no excess water. So where are we going to get the water from? I do believe we should have more recycling and conservation. But that's not what this proposal is about. It's more than a study. It's more than a study. It sets up bureaucracy. It starts to erode San Francisco's control over its water. That's very Greg, important. Can I, talk, can I talk about the cost issue? So, um, uh, and um, Jim said something that I think is very important for everyone viewing and, and here tonight is go read the initiative. I would urge you to do that because what Susan just described, my, my good friend Susan just described, is not anything that you're going to be voting on. Um, it is truly just a plan. It doesn't create a bureaucracy. It creates a five-member task force of volunteers made up of the general manager of the PUC, the general manager of the customers on the peninsula who buy water, two environmentalists, and an academic with an expertise in water recycling. They don't get paid a dime. Um, and it puts aside $8 million to bring some consultants in, hopefully to work with the SFPUC staff. But the staff have been so antagonistic to this idea that we had to create a framework that wouldn't be manipulated by them to do this. At the end of the day, the question of where will the money come from is a very important one. And Spreck touched on it, which is you can't figure out where the money is going to come from until you figure out how you're going to have to spend it. And then once you figure out how you spend it, where, what are the sources of revenue for that? Prop F identifies all that. 
and then brings it back to the voters in 2016, hopefully, if we do our job as Restore Hetch Hetchy and put it back on the ballot so that the voters can then make a judgment, is the benefit worth the cost? But Jim and Susan are suggesting and trying to scare you into not doing that research, not getting that information, so that in truly a city that, that prides itself on its environmental values can have a robust values conversation in 2016 about the merits of reforming our water system so that we can undo the damage we've done to the National Park and to the uh, wild and scenic Tuolumne River for the last 99 years. But hasn't this been studied already? I mean, the number of state agencies, Jim Wonderman's holding up a stack of, a stack of reports. Uh, you know, uh, hasn't this already been studied? It has been studied, but not planned for. And San Francisco has boycotted those studies. And these numbers that Jim and Susan have been throwing out there about the cost, if you look on page four of the report, it says this number was included because the PUC gave it to us, but they didn't provide us any of the financial documentation to back it up. And therefore, we're including it for that reason only. So well, that's, that's um, not what it says. But it, that's it, it, I've got it right here. Um, you want to read it? Yeah. The uh, Rick Rose so grants provided by the PUC. Yes. Let me. So let me. Um, but hang on one second. I want to re read um, <clears throat> a editorial from the Sacramento Bee, which gets to this whole point of how much money. <clears throat> excuse me. How much water is where? Uh, this is the Sacramento Bee uh, editorializing on, on this Proposition F. Contrary to rhetoric of reservoir defenders, Hetch Hetchy is not San Francisco's primary source of water, and draining it would not be disastrous. There are nine reservoirs that supply water to San Francisco, and Hetch Hetchy stores 25% of the total. Susan Leal, is the Sacramento Bee wrong on that? Yes. Okay. Yes, and I have a lot of respect for Jay Lund, but he is assuming that we can store our water in Don Pedro. It's full. That reservoir is full. It's could, controlled could it by- Could it be topped up? Could it be expanded? Look at the geography of that area. It's a flat area. It's not like you can build big walls. And when's the last time that somebody's approved building new storage? But Susan, a third of the water in Don Pedro is San Francisco water. No, it's not. It's a water not. bank for it's, the city. It's That's not. You're saying it's not a water bank? It, it's no. a water bank, and it means that it's not, there's not a drop of water. There is not a drop of water of San Francisco water that is stored in that reservoir. Well, that's and nonsense. seven you're, and you're, seven and it's seven semantics. excuse me. Seven years ago, the head of Alan Short, who is still the head of Modesto Irrigation District, sat probably a couple seats over and he said, It's our reservoir, there's no room in it for San Francisco. It's controlled by Modesto Irrigation District and Turlock Irrigation and District. And Ed Lee said he wouldn't run for mayor. People change their minds, no. and especially in the public arena. This is a political issue, not a plumbing issue. The fact is, it is a water bank. It means that we, um, in wet years, release more water downstream so that in dry years, we can release less. If they were to evict us, if we were not allowed to have a third of the storage there as a water bank, would we not have to find another reservoir for it? Let, is it not an important part? If you want to talk about water, water rights, let's talk about water rights. No, but why don't you answer that question? Let's, no, let's talk about water rights, because that'll get back to that. Ladies and gentlemen, we, by the Raker Act, San Francisco doesn't have senior water rights. The Raker Act is, is a federal law which allowed us to take water off the Tuolumne, to impound the water in Hetch Hetchy Reservoir. We have junior water rights. We have junior water rights to Turlock and Modesto. They hold the cards. And if you think we're going to tell them, oh, let's put water in your reservoir, I don't think so. They have senior water rights. They get the first draw of the river. And when people say things like, oh, you don't get your water from the reservoir, you get it from the river. Well, if you only got it from the river, this past year we would have had water for about a month because the water goes straight down the river. You have to store it. And our major number one source of storage is the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir. And let's talk a little bit about the clean energy that we would lose also if we took down that dam. And again, sure, maybe you'd say if, if it was 100, if we probably wouldn't put, be putting up a dam now, but right now we're providing water for 2.6 million people. And that clean energy, let's go back to that clean energy, that clean energy, the revenues from that clean energy has allowed San Francisco to install more solar. We have the largest solar installations of any city in California. And you know what that solar is paid for? How it's paid for? It's paid for by our clean energy re revenues from our clean hydropower energy. 
if we took down, we drained Hetch Hetchy, we would lose anywhere from 40 to 60 percent of not that true. clean power. That I, not if true. you want a lesson in, in power, I can <laughs> do that to you. I ran the system. And the reason why someone from San Francisco is not here is because they went through a transition. They just got a new general manager. And the outgoing general manager, he would be here, because I've heard him speak about this system. They just got a new one, and, and get, went the invite. So go ahead. Grand. Well, I think we've maybe answered the question of, gee, hasn't this thing been studied to death? Because well, we can't agree on the most basic facts, <laughs> and that is how much Tuolumne River water can you still bring to San Francisco without storing water in Hetch Hetchy Valley in Yosemite National Park? Uh, studies that I've done, that UC Davis has done, the federal government has done, say it's 95% and upward. So you've got to make up that 5%. That's difficult. That's important. But it's 95%. It's not we're losing the Tuolumne River. It's not we're losing 85%. And to say otherwise is plainly false. And that's why we need to have a real discussion, not this, which is a discussion about having a discussion that these folks don't want to have, with city officials and environmentalists and academics and engineers to talk about how to make the system work without storing water in the national park. And I think you'll find you'll be able to move 95 or more percent of the water. You'll be able to generate probably still 80 percent of the hydropower. And then we can talk about how do you replace what's lost without affecting the environment. See, see the and whether it's something it's that people want to pay down. for, but we haven't had that discussion yet. You haven't discussed the substance with us. You sit up, you sit up here on stage with us and tell Come us on. that we're spreading lies, but we haven't had a public discussion. It's been over 10 years. You're afraid of the camel's nose under the tent. That's what it is. You know, you know the, the problem you guys have is you have the, uh, the laws of physics don't apply in your particular campaign. Um, this, this is a system that's been studied and operated for 80 years since the water first uh, came in the early 1930s. Since that time, never has somebody turned on the spigot and water not come out. It is a absolutely reliable system. Think about how important that is. This is climate one. We're talking about a world in which we're going to have less snowpack, the experts predict. Water is going to be harder to come by. And what you're suggesting is we take storage that we have, that we paid for, that we built, was very difficult to get that project done, and we actually take it out of service and buy your case that somehow or other it can just meander its way down the river and we'll get it somewhere else and don't worry about it. And even in the environmental defense uh, report that you guys were behind uh, seven years ago, it stipulated that every five years, we, but only every five years, we would find ourselves in drought condition. And that's okay because we no. deserve, that's what it said. It doesn't okay? say that, Jim. Yes, it said it, okay? Yes, it said it. So this thing, ha you say it hasn't been studied. It's been studied time and time again. You may not like what the Department of Water Resources of the state of California said about it, but the fact is it laid uh, serious doubts about the efficacy of the program. It said it would cost three to $10 billion. Probably a lot of people in the audience here today have been up to Hetch Hetchy. Probably most of the folks have been here uh, up there. I've been there many times. It would only take one's a bit of imagination to understand the enormity of the cost of removing this facility, the environmental impacts of so doing, the cost of replacement in today's environment. We're talking about reliable, pristine water and hydropower for a, for, for a major iconic city and its neighbors, two and a half, 2.6 million people. And you know, our education system doesn't work, so we're struggling with that. Our infrastructure, generally speaking, doesn't work. We can't seem to protect ourselves, so let's take our water system out too. That seems to be the theory, and start again with that. I don't buy it. I think we, you know, I understand we probably wouldn't build this today, but this is something that actually works. It's a gravity-fed system, 200 miles of canals and pipelines, uh, built 80, you know, put in service 80 years ago. It actually, it actually functions. It doesn't use any pumps. One fifth of the energy in the state of California is spent pumping water. One fifth of our energy. This spends zero energy pumping water and in fact, in fact adds 1.6 million kilowatts back to the system to, uh, for good public purposes. This is not a perfect project. There isn't such a thing. Uh, it creates some environmental challenges, and maybe some people don't sleep so well at night over it. I understand. 
But you have to look at the entire scope of the needs of a society. These aren't times when we're floating around in a lot of money. We are facing tremendous societal issues. And in all of the, I, I understand you want to see this done, and I respect your desire to see it happen. But please, voters who are listening, listening to this program, think twice before you vote for this. Because what Mike says, oh, it's just a plan. You're just gonna, we're just going to look at it. It's not how it works. You're sending a powerful message to the United States Congress. A lot of people in that body don't happen to like San Francisco. And you're sending them a message that it's OK with the Shocking. city of San Francisco to go take a look at this thing. Well, so you, some fun. people here may think that's good. I don't think okay. it's good. And we'll do it what it takes to, to, to send the message that it's not. All right, Jim, Jim Wonderman is CEO of the Bay Area Council. Other guests today at Climate One are Spreck Rosecrans and Mike Marshall from Restore Hetch Hetchy and Susan Leal, former general manager of the San Francisco PUC. Uh, let's get back to the energy. Where is the displaced energy going to come from? We take out a dam that generates clean hydro. Where is that, is that mean, base load? Take Mike? this really quick. But clearly Halloween is upon us because uh, Jim wants you to be afraid, very, very afraid of the future. <laughs> I and, do. Um, you know, uh, it's often said that the system was an engineering marvel. And, and I think that's very true of the time in the early 20th century. Late 19th century was designed and then built in the early 20th century. It was also an environmental disaster. And we know that now in the, in the 21st century. And we look forward to the 21st century and we realize we have got to change the way we do business. We have to change the way we walk on the face of the earth. And we have to change the way our, um, our cities and counties operate. And, and so we have to rethink it. And so a planning process is key to that. Um, the, the threshold, if we get this, if Prop F passes and a plan is done, we then have to go out and get 60,000 signatures to get it on the ballot. And then the voters have to approve it again. So, this message to this concern about sending the wrong message to Congress is again, um, you know, he just, Jim wants you to be afraid, very, very afraid. The power issue is simple. We, you know, we, it's about a 20% loss of power according to the best studies that have been out there. Um, the, it's a minuscule amount compared to, I mean, the same amount of power will be delivered to San Francisco. All our hospitals, our schools will get the same amount of power. We, we sell most of the excess power to Turlock and Desto irrigation districts. So obviously with a 20% loss of power, we would sell less power. Um, but Prop F takes that into consideration and requires that before any changes be made and before the voters get to approve it, we identify wind and solar alternatives. And, and, it's, and an alternative that the city has never even considered but wind and solar don't develop the same kind of consistent base load that, that hydro does, right? So, it, Susan Leal? Yeah, let, let's talk a little bit about that 20%. It's really 40 to 60%. Let me describe it to you very quickly. There is one reservoir which does not provide drinking water. It does provide power. It comes down the, the, the hill through a tunnel, through a pipeline, hits a turbine, produces power. That's about 40% of the power. That would remain if Hetchy was drained. But at the O'Shaughnessy Dam, the water is captured there, goes into a tunnel, goes to Kirkwood Powerhouse. That's about 20% of the power. Then it goes down from Kirkwood, it goes down another tunnel to Moccasin Powerhouse. That's another 20%. At least another 20%. And, and there, so you, you're, you're, you're missing a reservoir. There's a third reservoir that supplies water to that system as well. No, there's only, there's, there's the three powerhouses. And there's three on, reservoirs. <laughs> There is one powerhouse that there's only one powerhouse that is not initially fed by capturing water at the O'Shaughnessy Dam. And that's the point. So you're losing anywhere from 40 to 60% of your power. And that is the home powerhouse, which is not fed by O'Shaughnessy Dam. So it's, you, you can't just, it, the water just doesn't go into a, a powerhouse. It has to go through waters and tunnels and it's captured where it's captured at the dam, that's where it goes to the dam. I think the controller statement on the, the San Francisco ballot says, what is it, about $41 million in lost revenue because of this electricity, Spreck Rosecrans? Yeah, and that's what, how you pay for solar. But Instead, that's based that's on her assumption that it's 40 to 60% of the power. What, that's we, not what true. we need to Spreck understand, we, we don't, this is an oral presentation without diagrams and so forth, uh, but one key element of a solution is probably, we don't know the final solution, but it's probably to implement a proposal that San Francisco themselves presented a couple decades ago, and that's to put a pipeline from home powerhouse that Susan mentioned at the bottom of the, uh, below the Cherry Reservoir, and pipe that water over through the Moccasin powerhouse. And how that's, much would that cost? 
Well, let's find out. Let's pass Prop F. And well, find out. well, if you if if you if you'd read our our report, you'd see that we escalated the cost uh, for time that San Francisco proposed in uh, I believe it was the the late '80s, or it, may, it was the early '80s. Anyway, so so again, uh, we can't agree here on the basic facts. Um, let's pass Prop F. Let's sit down in a room with some engineers and talk about it. These people, I'm sure, some of them, half of them would probably like to come back to a more technical discussion, but it can be done at far lower cost than, than what our opponents are claiming. I spoke with an uh, environmentalist recently with a national environmental organization, who, and I said, why aren't more environmental organizations, national ones, uh, coming out in support of Prop F? And he said, well, if we had $10 billion to spend on the environment, this would not be our top priority in California. We want something that would be systemic, uh, that would have a ripple effect. So I'd like either Mike or Sprech to respond sure. that why the envir other environmental organizations are not rallying behind this or sitting this well, one out. Well, first of all, change doesn't happen in a continuum, and, and we don't, we're, we're not an isolated nation state. But as the old bumper sticker used to say, think globally, act locally. San Francisco can't control the environmental improvements in much of the rest of the state. But the voters of San Francisco have a unique opportunity here. They have a unique responsibility because we cause such damage to Yosemite and the Tuolumne River, but it also presents us with an extraordinary opportunity. And then ultimately, that's what Prop F is, is it provides us the opportunity to impact environmental restoration projects around the world. Because at the end of the day, Yosemite is one of the most iconic places. Four million people visit each year. I think 25% of them are from um, across the, the world. Um, and to create this extraordinary environmental restoration project within the boundaries of a national park that not only will people go visit, and restoration scientists from around the world will come to learn uh, about um, the science of ecological restoration and restoring lost habitats, but in the internet age, kids from kindergarten to 12th grade are gonna be able to uh, in their environmental science classes actually have curriculums that watch the growth of a valley come back to life. San Francisco voters have the unique power to start that process. And so um, is this a, uh, and so I would argue that um, uh, it's really up to the San Francisco voters to, to decide whether it's worth pursuing and all Prop F does is pursue it. But I would argue then that once we accomplish it, it will have an impact on environmental res restoration projects, on water sustainability projects, um, far beyond the boundaries, a huge impact far beyond the boundaries of San Francisco or the boundaries of Yosemite. And you think other dams may come down? Uh, other dams are coming down right and left. Um, look at what's going on up in, in Washington State. It's very exciting. But yes, I think that, that if San Francisco can revisit a decision it made 100 years ago and say, hey, we're, we now get the impacts. Let's see if we can do better. That's going to infuse environmental restoration programs, dam removal projects around the country with a true sense of what is possible. And once again, take San Francisco from last in the state in terms of water management to first in the, the, the state, in the nation, in um, uh, deciding that they can do better. Greg, we do have broad well, support from environmental about, organizations for, for this. Uh, um, environmental defense is now neutral. Sierra Club is not neutral. They're, neither one of them is supporting it. But let's talk about let's this thing that. about last in the nation. San Francisco conserves water. We are one, about one third of the state average in the amount of water we use. And in terms of recycling, yes, we do recycle. In 2004, in our system, we put it recycled water so that the golf courses in between the San Francisco and, and uh, Daly City border they use recycled water for those golf courses. And speaking of eight million, that eight million that you could use for that study, you could do, expand a recycled water plant as San Francisco PUC is doing next week. Next week, they're expanding that uh, recycling plant that I mentioned, that one that was opened in That's 2000. It's in Daly City and owned by Daly City. It, it was paid for by San Francisco and we paid for it. San it's, Francisco it's paid for part, Don Pedro too. It's part, of our, uh, it's part of the Hetch Hetchy water system. No, we didn't pay for Don Pedro. 51% we did. But let me just say, if you could stop interrupting me, because I haven't interrupted you. If, if you could, let me just go hot and say that in 2004, we put together and paid for a recycling plant in Daly City, which provides those golf courses. San Francisco spent another $9 million, and next week that recycling plant, which has a capacity of 2.4 million gallons a day, will be expanded to irrigate Harding and Fleming golf, golf courses and parks. Now that's where $9 million can go, but they want us to spend $8 million 
doing a study, and, and he said we've boycotted this, or the city has boycotted this. When I was general manager, we had dozens of our engineers having to go up to Sacramento for months for the DWR study. And I think Jim's got a copy of it there. It's a pretty thick Department study. of Water Resources. Depar I'm sorry, Department yeah. of Water Resources. Months we were spending of our people were distracted going up to Sacramento to discuss our system with them. Susan Leal is the former uh, general manager of the San Francisco PUC. Our other guests today at Climate One are Mike Marshall and Spreck Rosecrans from Restore Hetch Hetchy and Jim Wonderman, CEO of the Bay Area Council. I'm Greg Dalton. If you're just joining us, there's a podcast of this and other Climate One programs available in the iTunes store. We're discussing Proposition F on the San Francisco ballot. The people who don't really have a voice here are, there's two and a half million people served by the Hetch Hetchy water system, and it's only San Francisco that gets to vote on this. Let's talk about the people, Silicon Valley, the peninsula, who are served by this system and impacted it, and yet they don't seem to have a voice, and they can't vote on this, and they're gonna be impacted. Mike Prop Marshall? F gives them a voice. That's right, the city owns and operates the system. So legally, they, they can have all the input they want, but they can't make any changes. They don't have the legal authority to do that. Only San Francisco has that. So that's where we're starting. But Prop F gives them an equal voice with the general manager of the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. So I don't disagree. The customers at this point, it should be a regional water system, not a San Francisco owned and operated system, but that's the legal situation. And until the legislature, California legislature or the board of supervisors or somebody with the authority to give them part ownership, that, we, we can't go to them and ask them for, to, be, to have an input. So, so we're a regional business association. Uh -huh. We've worked on this before. And in fact, uh, back in, I believe it was 2008, I think it was, we passed, or no, it's about 2004. So we passed a major bond measure in San Francisco. I think it was $1.6 billion. And in order uh, to seismically retrofit the Hetch Hetchy system and make it safe for the next uh, generations, and at the same time, the water users on the peninsula and in Alameda County put up a bond measure under their own authority of over $2 billion to match San Francisco's investment. So I would call that a vote. Uh, nobody seems to be turning on their tap uh, in, in, uh, in, in San Mateo County or in Santa Clara County or Alameda County and complaining that they're two-thirds of the users of the system. The governance may not be exactly what somebody might want to be if it was designed today, but the system is working. And like many other uh, water districts throughout the state, some districts are, uh, are dependent upon supplies from some others. In San Francisco's case, it's been a pretty good steward because in all of the history of the system, it has supplied that water on a continuous basis. Now, if you turn the clock back, to before Hetch Hetchy and before the earthquake and fire in 1906, this wasn't the case. This city and the surrounding area was dependent on water that wasn't showing up. That the lack of water and water pressure were the major reasons behind the destruction of San Francisco back in 1906. We provided a system <laughs> that took care of that problem. San Francisco voters actually invested in the bond measures uh, that provided that system. And today, it's working for two and a half million people. So the idea that somehow there's underrepresentation in this issue, I think is a really, it's, it's, it misses the point. The fact of the matter is that we have a system that works. It's working for those two and a half million people. Uh, you know, the Sacramento Bee, which you mentioned, is a, you know, represents a newspaper, that editorial, which takes their story, hook, line, and sinker, represents the most wasteful region in the state when it comes to water use. You didn't quote the San Francisco Chronicle and the San Francisco Bay Guardian and Singtao Daily and other papers, which, which firmly say no on F and strongly uh, comment that w voters should take a very hard look and vote no on this measure. So, you know, we're, we are in a situation in which the vast proportion of folks, I would include those on the peninsula, uh, and in and Alameda County say unequivocally, we, you know, we should stop this before it gets too far down the path because this is a very, very dangerous. And I would ask you know, my friends Mike and Spreck, if this is so good, why are so many respected leaders in, in, in the newspaper business, in, in uh, elected officials, in organizations, the San Francisco Democratic Central Committee, others, why are they all opposed to this? What is so good about it that nobody can find the reason to support it? Mike Marshall, it's not often that the Bay Guardian and the Bay Area Council are on the same side of things. <laughs> so, um, See, we're unifiers. Um, uh, yeah, but the Bay Area Guardian, their, their issue is with PG&E, who Jim works for, uh, or is one of his, mem one of his members. Um, they have a very different, they support restoring Hetch Hetchy, just not until we get rid of PG&E, which is just a little too tall of an order for restore Hetch Hetchy to accomplish. Um, uh, you but, didn't read the editorial, but, but there's well, but the you know another unifying force. All of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors who don't agree on anything, they're also you know, lined up against this. So. Well, so we, 
Prop F, rightly or wrongly, I think is perceived by uh, folks as an indictment of the management of our water system over the last 20 to 25 years. And I think that's unfortunate, um, but we, we are far behind the rest of the state and the rest of the country when it comes to sustainable water practices. And you know, Susan talks and, and, and the opponents talk about how great we are at conserving water, but you know, folks, we don't have front yards, swimming pools, or uh, air conditioning, so we can't use water. And I've been a renter in my apartment in Hayes Valley for 14 years, and I've never seen a water bill. More importantly, the SFPUC has never sent me something encouraging me to um, uh, conserve water. 65, 68% of San Franciscans rent their homes, and so the vast majority of us don't pay our water bills, which is the single best impetus for conserving water. So um, I think the reason, uh, there are two reasons. One is that this is a bit of indictment of the existing leadership, and I don't think that's the case. We're constantly trying to change and improve the way we're doing business. Um, and, um, you know, Senator Feinstein has long-standing opposition to this, and honestly, she casts a very dark shadow over, over people get late night phone calls from the good senator threatening them. So um, I think oh, that has, I know it's unfortunate, no, no. but it's true. Susan Liao. Let's talk about outreach to the customers. At least when I was general manager, I know the, uh, my successor in general, as general manager of the SFPUC did aggressive outreach to those people who pay the bill. And what happens is with, with a lot of, we do have tenant kits that we give out to property owners, but we do reach out, and, they, and, the, and the utility does reach out to property owners, so that they provide incentives for low flow fixtures, low flow toilets, and that has been a real hallmark. And yes, oh, we don't have swimming pools and we don't have lawns, but you know what? During the day, our place balloons to twice its size, and that's a lot of water being used by people, and yet we're able to conserve by reaching out the utility has reached out to the, to the restaurants, the hotels, and to aggressively, in a, in, a, in a nice way, to the residents, basically saying, he, he, use less water, we'll provide you incentive to use less, and if you use more, you'll pay a higher tier rate. And if you've seen any of Can your I water agree? bills, if you've seen any of your water bills, and I'm sorry as a renter you haven't, but that, that's probably a good thing if you, you probably don't want to see your water bill, but if you've seen your water bills, they're tiered rates, and if you start using more, you get a higher bill. That's why we reach out to the property owners. That's why the PUC did when I was general manager, and I know that uh, the current GM uh, is doing that as well. Uh, can I agree Mike with Marshall? Susan for a sec? Is, is that Do you have to? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and, and she's right in projecting that, in fact, the SFPUC is projecting that we as um, residents will reduce our water consumption by 10 million gallons a day. Um, we currently use about 80, and it's going to go down to about 70, which is extraordinary and terrific. But the SFPUC, what do they want to do with that water? Do they want to leave it in the natural environment? Do they want to leave it on the Tuolumne River? No, they want to sell it at cost to Silicon Valley because they are projecting more water needs into the future. So the incentive for us to conserve is completely eliminated relative to our environmental sensibilities. This, the Prop F is not just designed about coming up with a plan, but it's in fact ultimately designed to change the way we as a city think about water. We, can't, we have to have a 21st century notion of water, which is to leave as much of it in the natural environment compared to the 20th century when the, the philosophy was, let's take as much of it out of the environment and, and hoard it as much as we can. Um, we need to leave as much in the natural environment and reuse and reuse the water we have far more effectively than we are on the tra tra trajectory to do. Let's have our audience questions. Yes, welcome. Hi, thank you for including me. My name is Holly Bundock. I represent more than a, almost 1,000 members of the Coalition of National Park Service Retirees. And I wonder what the city would suggest, or even the Bay Area Council, would suggest to know that the Elwha dams and the Glyne dams in Olympic cost only $325 million to, re, to take down by land acquisition, build wastewater treatment plants, restore the valleys, and indeed, these are dams in Washington State. In Olympic Washington National. State, yeah. so the okay. coalition supports Prop F. Please okay. vote. It's, it was yeah. a very. I'll just say, and Susan can minute. comment. It was a very. It's a great project. We're all for it. There's tons of dams on tons, many many dams in in the western United States and across the country that are out, out of service. They're not providing potable water for 
the, the people who once depended on them, they're not providing flood control. Let's take them out of service. I think that one, as you correctly stated, was a couple hundred million dollar type project. Uh, you know, let's go for those. Let's do more projects where, where you're not removing a system that people are depending on, and let's protect the systems that people uh, depend on today. And, and you know, I, I think those are the balances and the kinds of issues that we have and the questions that, that really should be asked here. Is this really worth it? Susan Leal? I think uh, it's important to note that we, uh, uh, the, uh, we the city, has uh, taken dams out of, out of service in the Niles Canyon, the Niles River. Uh, I know that in about 2006, we took a, a dam out of commission. And when, when a dam is not uh, being used and it's unused as it was in the Elway, it should be uh, removed. The other thing I want to mention about the na uh, national parks is that every year the ratepayers of San Francisco or the ratepayers of the SFPUC provide $5 million every year to the, to the national parks up in Yosemite to maintain the backpacking base camp and the trails all around Yosemite. Go there sometime, it's absolutely stunning to hike and so camp. So the bulk of the five million is for uh, security ever since 9-11, the security costs for water companies around the country have gone way through the roof. We get a special deal because we contract with the Park Service, the National Park Service, to provide that security and to provide that trail maintenance. But those are, those are costs for any uh, water company. Very few water companies have the opportunity to subcontract with a federal agency. Let's get our next audience question. Yes, welcome. Hi, I'm Karen Kiefer from Redwood City. Um, where we have a salt pond owned by Cargill that DMB Associates from Scottsdale, Arizona want to pave over, I think it's 1,486 acres um, to build 12,000 homes for 30 to 32,000 people. One of the things there was the water question because Redwood City has gray water, we recycle, but we don't have enough allotment. What are we, where are we going to get it? DMB has said from the current County Nickel family, they got the water rights, but Santa Clara County and Alameda won't go along with those water rights. Um, so, Department of Defense said that the next world war is going to be over water. <laughs> Where are we going to get water? Uh, I agree that Tuolumne just doesn't have enough. Where are we going to it, get it? It's, it's, it's very, I it's, a very, it's a very, it's a very tough, uh, it's a so, very tough issue, and and in, since the uh, this. California became a state, uh, water has been, been a tough issue that we fight over. If, if I could say, and I, I'm fairly familiar with, with that example, and it's a complicated interchange of, of Fremont and the Nickel family and Kern County Water Agency mm -hmm. and the water agencies in the Bay Area have declined to participate and cooperate. And we hear so much about water, people, people fighting over water. What we don't hear about is the enormous amount of cooperation. San Jose, the Santa Clara Valley Water District, is banking groundwater in the, in the same volume as we store in Hetch Valley under the ground in Kern County, as is urban Southern California. Uh, urban Southern California is buying water from the Sacramento Valley. Again, people that never said they would sell that water. There's, whether you like it or not, there are a lot of deals that are being done, a lot of exchanges, and many of them are very, very successful. And in this case, when we talk about wanting to restore Hetch Valley, we know our work's cut out for us. But to get the folks in Eastside Irrigation District and Turlock to work with San Francisco to make sure we lose zero Tuolumne River water is a very doable thing from a physical perspective, and we need to make it work from an institutional perspective. And Restore Hetchy has put in writing that we are pledged to work with Redwood City and other folks on the peninsula as this thing goes, as as Prop F goes forward, if it passes, we will go to the state legislature with you, if possible. You may remember that 10 years ago, uh, you folks brought the, the uh, degeneration of the pipeline system to the state legislature. You threatened to take the water system away, and that's why we now have a, a very important $5 billion water system improvement plan that San Francisco was forced into doing. So the customers are very important. They need reliable water. They need reliable infrastructure. Let's go to our next audience question. Yes, welcome. Yes, hello. My name is Marta Salas Porras, and I'm a concerned citizen who came to the meeting today to get more informed. I'd like to say that I um, and my five generations of my family have enjoyed Yosemite National Park, the incredible beauty there, and just how uh, the enriching experience of being able to camp there and go there. I'd like to say that I would urge all environmentalists and people who are thinking of, of voting yes on this 
to actually get educated and um, find out more information. I think that my answer is vote no on F. We need to place more of our education on um, learning more about how we can support the school system, how we can change what is really the problem based on our society right now and um, the San Francisco area and look at our schools. So I would say Thank vote you. no on F. Thank you. Any response quickly? Let's have our next person. I agree. It, it, it should, you know, I, I, I get it. We, we live in tough times. And, um, money's but tight. Money's tight, but that should not be an obstacle to us that having big ideas and thinking grandly about the future. America, I was, grew up in America of, of an ingenuity. It was, a, it was that sense of American ingenuity that built the system. And we can bring that same sense and, and um, economics to reforming the system so that it begins to undo the damage it does to Yosemite National Park. We're talking about uh, San Francisco Proposition F at Climate One. Let's have our next audience question. What's the uh, my name is George Miller. I'm not the congressman. I'm a civilian. 16 years ago, I began volunteering at the Bancroft Library, and I cataloged the corporate archives of the Spring Valley Water Company going back to 1861. I cataloged all of O'Shaughnessy's personal papers. I'm the only person on earth that's read them. It took me four years, it was 364 <laughs> boxes, but I learned a lot about this, including a letter from Mr. O'Shaughnessy to then Mayor Roth before he took the job as to why this was a bad idea. Uh, I too read the Water Resources Report, and I got as far as page 40. Under benefits of restoration, uh, we've talked about the cost is 12 billion, maybe, whatever. The annual benefits of restoring Hetch Hetchy Valley range from 26 million to 6 billion. That's annual. Now, I grew up in the investment business. Now, if you presented me an idea that cost 10 and returns 6, I'm in. So, <laughs> I'd like to respond so to that. Uh, Susan Lau, this is getting to the idea of valuing services provided by ecosystems and, and assigning a value to them. Right, and it, that's if you want Yosemite, Hetch Hetchy, that part of Yosemite, that part of Yosemite to look like Yosemite Valley floor. Oh, come on, Susan. Do you want Stop it to be? That. How do you make money? You have to bring people. In fact, San Francisco, in case you don't know, they own in fee simple the land under the water. That's true. So it could be O'Shaughnessy uh, Lodge and Links, um, and or 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 you know lodges. That's a, the only way you make money is if you put a lot of people in cars in there like Yosemite Valley. Right there, you can go to Hetch Hetchy Valley, and it is beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful walking, beautiful walking, hiking, backpacking. I've done it. I, hope, I would encourage you all to do it. In the springtime, the wildflowers are absolutely stunning. S and you Marshall, might quickly. see a bear or two. S Mike Marshall? I, I mean, Susan sort of missed the, the, the whole concept here, which is the economic value of a restored Hetch Hetchy Valley. Um, valley. In a modern world, we have to, um, in order to make cost-benefit analysis, we have to begin to assign values to the natural world. And that's what George is talking about, and that's what the state of California on their own came up and said, look, it might cost you this much to do, but this is what we get back on an annual basis, upwards of $6 if billion. If you develop it. But they use the same economic modeling. No, not if you develop it. If, you, if it's undeveloped, the same economic modeling used in the litigation for Mono Lake, where LA gave up 25% of their water supply, not their storage, but their supply, um, it was the exact same uh, uh, economic modeling that was used here. Um, and it's, it's something that, we, that San Francisco is going to have to deal with one way or the other, um, because we, as long as we continue to use Hetch Hetchy as a reservoir, we are denying the state that economic benefit. We've got a long line of questioners. We'll try to get through as many people as we can. We're talking about Proposition F in San Francisco at Climate One. Yes, sir. Let's well, uh, unlike George, I haven't read any of that stuff. It seems like I need to start hanging out at Bancroft more. Um, but my question is, is if we're wasting all that water, and I, I agree we are, we're, we're water scope flaws, if we really need, need to go down the conservation path, why are we spending, why don't we see a proposal to do that rather than spending $3 billion that we don't have to take away an existing water resource and existing hydro as a way to uh, stranglehold people into conserving? That's Seems that, like that, that would be the right that, answer. No, but the I, problem. I agree, with, that, I agree with you. I think that if we spent that eight million we're talking about in this study, or if this proposition said, let's require more recycling, more conservation, make this system which is sustainable, more sustainable, 
I think a lot of people that are opposed to it before to it. Susan, why would we require something until we know what our capacity is? Prop F is designed to figure out our capacity in terms of water recycling, groundwater recharge, groundwater use, um, uh, restoration of the Tuolumne. Before we make any decisions about doing it, we need to have a plan in place that gives us all the facts and figures. So to the gentleman's question, vote yes on Prop F because it answers your question. It is specifically designed to give us the, that information before we make any decisions about reforming the system. The, the agency has spent the last several years looking at how, how much more to recycle. They already have budgeted and moving forward more recycling beyond the one that they had. More than they're doing, they don't do any, yes, so yeah, they do. that's not very yes, hard. Yes, they do, they do, they paid for the one, and they do, and Harding Park, Fleming, those are opening next week, Olympic Club, all those are on unrecycled water. San Francisco, all those golf courses on recycled water. Right, but when you and, walk and, out and, and watch and the streets being hold washed, hold it's with Tuolumne River water. And the, that's, you know, I was always supposed to that as general manager, and they use a lot more gray water, and they're gonna be using more gray water, and the point is, Let's, if you want a, a proposition that requires more recycling, more conservation, you get people to support it. That's not what this is about. It sets up a task force. It sets up a budget for a task force. It sets up them going, th that to me is another bureaucracy. But if the voters okay. approve it, then it has public support, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what we If they do approve it, but I yeah. would hope they vote no. Let's have our audience question. Yes, sir. Uh, I haven't uh, heard from any of the panelists about the political considerations, the big picture considerations that are behind Proposition F. Mm. I see two possibilities. One, that it would release more water for large farms in the Central Valley, and the other, that it would simply uh, embarrass San Francisco and yeah. possibly degrade uh, their representatives. If I may, Greg, on this. Let me, can I answer that? I don't think so. Because I, I don't think you. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'm playing. The number one Congrats supporter of the project, the, the member of Congress that these gentlemen have secured, is, is Dan Lundgren. Jim, that's true. Repres oh, no, that's true. That, no, that is true. Jim okay, Lundgren because I've debated him. And that's the only other debate I participated in. Dan Lundgren is your supporter. He is and there's supporter. a good reason for it. And last time it was. 13 years ago. It was Don Hodel. And, and it's always somebody hey, on, from outside of San Francisco. And the gentleman is correct. 13 years ago, I sat in a living room in Merced, California and along with another dozen people uh, decided to form a group called Restore Hetch Hetchy. We have been working since that time toward restoration of Hetch Hetchy Valley in Yosemite National Park as a single goal. We work with other environmental organizations that have broader goals and, and the so best forth. you can get is uh, Dan Lunger. Excuse me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And on. who you have? And what we have, and, what, and these who people are dedicated to this goal as well as creating a fair and cost-effective plan for water supply, replacing the water supply and power that would be lost. And we've got people on the left, we've got some Democrats, we've got some Republicans. This is an American issue. And you're rolling your eyes. There's no, there's no hidden agenda. There's no profiteering. This is the one time that any insult like this has been done to one of our national parks. No dam has been built in an existing national park before Hetch Hetchy was built, and none has been built since. Congress has seen to that. They've essentially admitted they made a mistake in 1913. We choose to try to undo that mistake and to provide a better vision for America's national parks going forward. Let's get to a couple of questions before we have to wrap this up on Proposition F in San Francisco. Yes, sir, let's have your question. Welcome. Hello, I'm, I'm Bill Klingelhofer. I live in San Francisco. I've uh, hiked around Hetch Hetchy Reservoir on the north side in the spring. It's a beautiful hike that's pristine condition maintained by the city of San Francisco. What I'd like to know is uh, the uh, Don Pedro Reservoir, which has been talked about as a possible other source, of, a place to hold the water, uh, has, is mainly irrigation water and it's had boating and has a, a MTBE and other chemicals that are related to boating. And I'd like to know uh, what about the pollution in, in that reservoir and has that been studied? Well, um, we, we really haven't studied, at least the out. SFPUC has not studied it to my knowledge because we don't own or operate it or, and uh, Modesto has made abundantly clear, including two weeks ago in a letter to the, letters to the editor from the head of the utility 
in, to the Modesto B saying that there is no storage for San Francisco in their reservoir. So that's why we haven't looked at it, but you do raise a good point uh, about uh, Don Pedro. And what, what, what we propose is to divert the river when it's flowing, divert from Cherry Reservoir, which San Francisco owns and operates, when uh, the river is not flowing during the dry times of the year, like right now, and that gets you 95% of the water. Don Pedro would still be operated as a water bank, as it is now, a very valuable asset for San Francisco. Nothing would change down there. Yes, sir, let's have the next audience question. Thank you, uh, my name is Ron Sundergill. I'm the regional director of the National Parks Conservation Association here in San Francisco. Um, and I had a comment and a question. Uh, the comment is, um, well, there's been a number of, uh, I think, erroneous statements made here tonight. I think the most egregious one was uh, Mr. Wonderman's statement about uh, national environmental groups not supporting this initiative. Um, I represent an organization, which is one of the largest which is one of the largest national conservation groups in the United States. We have 600,000 members, uh, 100,000 in the state of California. Uh, and there's other groups uh, like ours that, that, that support uh, this initiative. But my question is then to either Sprack or Mike, what are the other national environmental groups that are supporting and or regional groups? Real quickly, then we'll get to another audience question. We have to wrap this up. Well, let, uh, let's, uh, let's be clear that there, there are, uh, the National Wildlife Federation is probably the biggest, sorry, Ron, they're, they're, they're bigger than you by a factor of several. <laughs> uh, locally, the Pl Planning and Conservation League, Friends of the River, and a variety of others. San Francisco and, League of Conservation Voters. And, 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 but bear in mind, there are other groups that support restoration, but have not wanted to get involved in the tawdry local political angle, so they're not involved with Prop F but the Environmental Defense Fund, Sierra Club, uh, and, and individually 20 different chapters of the Sierra Club have all endorsed restoration of Hetch Hetchy Valley, so let's not lose sight of that. Let's have another question we get to the end here. Yes, sir, welcome to Climate One. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Um, my name is Max Shaver. I'm a retired National Park Superintendent, and I represent the uh, Association of National Park Retirees and the Association of National Park Rangers, all of who vote although most don't live in San Francisco. Um, I do. Um, I'd like to just to point out that uh, two of the strongest congressional supporters of removal of the dams in Olympic, Elwha and the others, were Nancy Pelosi and Dianne Feinstein. And they're not supporting this. And the reason is a classic NIMBY issue, not in my backyard. They do not want on their... <laughs> They do not want, on their watch, to lose something that was gained 100 years ago. They know it's the right thing to do, and they knew it was an Olympic. They knew it is now. It's a big mistake if we don't pass Prop F. You know, I, you know, I, I don't think it's fair. You know, that, uh, I appreciate that if you spend your career with the national parks, you may find this a particularly attractive moment. Uh, I don't think it's fair to put thoughts into Dianne Feinstein and Nancy Pelosi's head because I personally have a lot of respect for those two individuals. I worked for Dianne Feinstein when she was mayor, despite the fact, you know, I and probably no one here agrees with everybody all the time. But these are two very well studied individuals. These are two people who are great leaders of our state, our city and our region. And it's not easy. If you think it's easy to get an elected official of that quality and character to just come along to your side because you know, they want to just protect something, it's not the way it works. These are extremely thoughtful individuals. They look at the issues. They're well staffed. They're, they're very, very well versed. Once again, if this is such a good thing, if you have such a great idea, Mike and Spreck, why is it that every, the mayor and every single former mayor, every member of the Board of Supervisors, the San Francisco Chronicle, the Bay Guardian, sing to, uh, can okay, we, we just put yeah. them all in a box and say they're all doing this for some nefarious reason and then in their heart of hearts they actually know better? I just don't think so. I think you really need to look in a mirror and say, what exactly is it about our proposal that falls short? And let's have that conversation. We've been, okay, quickly, Mike, and yeah. then we're going to go to the question. Um, I would just point out that 16,000 San Franciscans, rank and file people with strong environmental values, 
signed petitions to put this, to create this debate and put this before us as voters. Um, and I, I would hope that there wouldn't be the disdain for that process or for those 16,000 people compared to the 50. But we decided. know that when it was put on the ballot, people thought they were voting for sustainability and more conservation and more recycling. They and are. Who wouldn't vote for that? But they that's are. not what this proposition is about. This is about draining one of our Susan, the most city attorney wrote the petition. The, so the city right. attorney let's, let's People don't read. You, come on, we've all been there when someone asked us to sign one of those things. This is about... It's Here's your own campaign literature. Recycle okay, our on. water. This is what you put out. Okay, does it say drain Hetch Hetchy? No, it took a judge to say that it needed to say that on the ballot because you didn't want to say no, it. No, it didn't. So the let's judge, just be honest about disagreed. what we're discussing. Let's have our uh, audience question. We're at the end here. Yes. I'm, my name is Mark Lutier, and I'm the policy director of the San Francisco Foundation, and we did some careful analysis of this. And I want to make one brief comment and then ask a question, which was local environmental organizations do believe in restoring Hetch Hetchy. I think most of the people in this audience, in an ideal sense, agree with restoring Hetch Hetchy. They don't agree with this proposition, and they don't agree unless we find alternative clean energy sources we're not gonna find the water, that there's not the, this is not the time we don't have the technology. And that's part of the, the reason why we oppose Proposition F. But really I wanna to get to, for a second, I wanna ask, let's say Proposition F passes, and the study is done and it recommends taking down the dam. Let's say it's, let's say it's $3 billion. Who's gonna pay? What will they forego? Who pays taxes? Who are rate payers? How much of that is of their disposable income, and what's going to happen to low-income folks, low-income kids, their access to education? This is not the right time to be doing well, this. Let me respond yeah. to that very quickly. And Mark, thank you for the question, but I would say um, you can't find something unless you look for it. Um, you said, how, how can we find more alternative energy? How can we find more water? Well, we need to look for it, and Prop F is that. It creates a planning process to identify the very issues you have concerns about. And I agree that we have all kinds of societal needs, but I'll be damned if I accept that it's an either-or proposition, that we can't invest in the environment because we have to invest in our kids. And to pit children, poor children, against the environmental improvements and change, as the San Francisco Foundation has done, Mark, you know, you're my buddy, but I just think that's reprehensible. I think um, uh, we have got to recognize that every child that walks this earth needs to inherit it first. And in order to do that, we have to make environmental changes let's, that Prop F puts San Francisco on the talk, trajectory Let's to talk do. about that Excuse $3 billion. Out. Because that just about equals, that just about equals the U.S. budget for national parks. So that's $3 billion. And it was 3 to $10 billion. I think the estimates could be much, much higher. So that's, so a, lot of, let, let's, that's a lot of money. And where's that? You know what? We're doing a big seismic upgrade and we only pay a third of it. That's 4.5 billion. There are wastewater treatment plants that we have to upgrade. Those cost at least a couple billion. If you wanna talk about pollution and environment, there are wastewater treatment plants up and down this state that are polluting bays and rivers. Where's the money for that? Where, where, when you got billions of dollars, where do we really need it? For other environmental improvements? For education? That's a lot of money. Last question. This really is the last question. Yes, sir. Welcome. Yeah, to yes, mind. John Carpenter, Mountain View. There's one thing tonight that has not been mentioned. This, it's silting. That's a property of large reservoirs. They silt up. Hoover Dam has a horrible amount of silt behind it. The cost of dredging is equally horrible. I can't say that. So, 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 the, the, so the question is, Shenessee Reservoir, what percentage of it is silted up and how much is it going to cost to dredge it? It is a, uh, because it is a granite bowl, that was one of the reasons that O'Shaughnessy chose that site. And because it is in the granite bowl, it has not silted up. Um, they have done, um, in, in the mid 80s when the, when the lake really went down, they could, they could also investigate that. It has not, so that's good news. And, it's not would, silted up. I would agree with that, but um, I would add that there, the, when the city clear cut the valley floor, they didn't take into consideration the 8,000 years of Native American life. And so within the minimal sediment that is behind the dam, there's significant Native American cultural artifacts and remains. And so although there won't necessarily be a huge expense assigned, there needs to be a lot of time and energy put into 
um, respecting those cultural sites, and um, I have a and, and there will be a time a, a time frame involved in doing that. I have a comment on that. Actually, when we took testimony on different things about the water system uh, uh, in the in the in 2006, 2005, we went up the country, which need, means near the uh, O'Shaughnessy Dam, and 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 they took comments from a number of different people, and they've got found people who were uh, uh, had were had some Native American heritage. And their point about Hetch Hetchy was they wanted it undisturbed. They, wanted, they didn't want it uh, drained and then it made like Yosemite Valley. That is the comments that our staff got. There, so that is, uh, and that's, have, imp that's important to keep in mind. And they testified in front of the California legislature, and Susan's right. Some of the tribes and Native American uh, bands uh, are opposed to the idea, and others support the idea. So there needs to, and Prop F mentions the concerns of Native Americans mm -hmm. and says that uh, they are key stakeholders in this process mm -hmm. and need to, no matter whether Prop F passes or not, need to be brought into Absolutely. the fact that, that our water system severely impacts their cultural uh, sites. We have to end it there. Our thanks to Mike Marshall, Executive Director of Restore Hetch Hetchy, Spreck Rosecrans, Director of Policy at Restore Hetch Hetchy, Jim Wonderman, CEO of the Bay Area Council, and Susan Leal, uh, Water Consultant and former General Manager of the San Francisco PUC. I'm Greg Dalton. I'd like to thank our audience on the radio and here tonight at Climate One. Thank you all for coming.